um, I'm going to hopefully be able to um, just show you two, three different ways of um, developing listening of our students um, online. Because it is a challenge. And when I first started doing it, I thought, oh my goodness, how am I going to teach online listening? And how am I going to manage the classroom? Because at the end of the day, we are teachers and we still want to manage a classroom and not just deliver stuff which is essentially flat and online. And I think a lot of people, if you've ever done a course online, you will know um, that it could be incredibly boring to just do something online. You may as well be on your own and study on your own. And I'm, so I'm really eager to understand how we can still make a classroom and how we can still give our students the type of education they deserve. Okay, so moving on. Um, so I became aware yesterday that, um, sorry, the day before yesterday of a little bit more about your situation. So I'm just going to minimize that, okay. So I did became a bit more aware of your situation. So I thought very carefully about what we can do. So we're going to use Zoom as we're using now. I, by the way, I'm not a complete expert at Zoom, but um, it's something I think we've all got to learn. Um, going to have a look at Google Classrooms. I know you're using them. And I wanted to show you Vokaroo for listening classes. So we're going to mainly look at three different things. We're going to review two lesson formats for teaching listening online. And the reason I've chosen a lesson format and sort of this formulaic approach is because I really honestly feel that just as we as teachers are struggling a little bit to find our way online, I think as well, students as well need to understand what the expectation is. So in the end, what I did with my classes was follow just some very um, normal principles for, for quite a few of the classes. And it actually really helped the students. It reduced time wasting. It reduced me having to explain things all the time. And the students felt I think more comfortable and I could get them on task quicker. So that was the reason for doing that. Okay, we're going to, one of the, one of the activities is uh, a dictogloss and I'm keen to do this because of Carol, um, Carol's great uh, session. Um, she mentioned um, dictoglosses and I thought perhaps that was something that we could look further at. And it was something I used a lot at the University of Southampton. So, okay, and I'm also very keen to develop learner autonomy. And first of all, we're going to be looking at listening logs. So what is a listening log? We know that, we know that our students need to learn um, listening, but one of the things they really need to be able to do that is exposure to listening, just like we practice playing the piano or we practice um, uh, writing, or we practice mathematics, we practice riding a bicycle. We only really get better at things if we practice them and listening is the same. So exposure does matter. So one of the first things I wondered is if you could just write in the chat room, what do you listen to in English? Which websites do you use? And do you listen to the radio? Can we share some of your favorite ideas? And if you just go to the chat room next to, uh, next to you, so open it up, we can just see what people enjoy doing. The ways we can, let's see. Ah, oh, we watch National Geographic, brilliant. I mean, we've got some really good things. So, so I often with the students have um, listened to some things on BBC, movies and songs, Nabila. Nabila, why do you like Nabila? Nabila, why do you like movies and songs for the for your students? 
no one's written in Arabic. You're trying to confuse me. <laughs> the sound is very low, is it? Okay. Can you hear me better now? Is that better? Is that an improvement on the volume? Is that an improvement on the volume, Ashraf? No, no, everything is okay. Okay, good, okay. They are All responding right. to you. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, Nabila, so that's a great way to attack the kids. <laughs> okay, to get them involved, isn't it? And it's really, really good. Oh, don't worry, Nora, it doesn't matter. Okay, so great. We've got some, we've got some really good ideas. Now, now, one of the things that I think is really important as a teacher and, and as students is to think how we can share that information. So one of the, oh, I'm never quite sure how I'm supposed to be able to do this. And I'm going to show you something that I've used with the, with the students. And I think this might be a really good thing for you. This is just something I've set up on Google Docs and uh, it's a listening log. Now you could set one of these up for your class, but you could also set it up as a professional development area for yourselves. And I love that Reem, the inspirational stories on TEDx. And TEDx, Reem, why is, uh, TEDx is so good. And I think it really is good because there's so many things you can do with the uh, um, audio. You can slow it down. You can easily get a transcript. There's a lot of variety. There's some things which aren't particularly appropriate. There's lots of things which really help a bit more with their critical thinking and with engaging. So this is just a simple listing log. All I've done is put in the title, and I like this one. I really like this one. Um, it's Ideas by BBC. I like it because it's got really, it's really short. It's like six minutes and under. It's very varied. There's lots of different types of things on there. <coughs> and indeed, I shared one of you. Um, Ashraf, I hope you sent around that email with the link this morning of the listening from YouTube. Um, yes, I've, I've seen it. Yeah, but some of you might. Early be. morning, yeah. Thank you, Ashraf. And I think some of some people may have been able to use um, to look at it, and some people wouldn't have. But don't worry too much. It's it, you know, it's just if you could do it. So this is just a just a quick idea of how you can share your expertise as well as as teachers. So maybe you could have a shared area where you could put in listing logs, sharing your ideas because you have loads of ideas and you know you are a great resource yourselves. Okay, so that's our first, our first idea. And actually it's great because you've already added loads of things in the chat room, which you can now add to the listening log. So, okay, that's tick, one thing done, one thing completed. All right, so we want to create some resources and we want to be able to get our students to listen to more. Okay, so let me go back to our presentation. All right, so, Let's move on to the second. It's moved very fast. This okay. So one of my favourites is the is this is the place from BBC iPlayer, and it can be listened to abroad. But I believe loads of it is on YouTube anyway. Sorry, it's jumping around a bit here. All right, so um, I wanted to talk to you about two different formats, and this is one format in particular that I used very often in the online teaching classes. Okay, so in a minute, we're going to go into some breakout rooms and um, answer some questions. Now, today I sent round some... Uh, an, I sent round your um, 
a task from YouTube. And really it was just a listening and it was a listening about the wonderful world of words. Okay, and um, did everybody manage to do this? I'm not quite sure if everybody managed to do this. I'm not sure, just ask them. Yeah, can I have some? Who did watch the YouTube link I've seen this early morning? Just write me on the chat. Okay, we have Tahani. Great. Ah, okay. Great, quite, quite a few people did. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I mean, I think it was quite interesting, isn't it? It's quite a, it's quite a short, small bit. Now, the reason that I sent that round is that one of the strategies that I really did was to be able to send round an email and share um, a task with students before the class. Okay, now. Let's have a think, what are the benefits? And we're going to go into our chat rooms and be able to, I'm going to put you into some breakout rooms and I'm going to give you some questions to be able to answer. Okay, so thinking about the listening, I sent around some pre-listening tasks. So the pre-listening brought up some vocabulary and it was about how we, how language really affects us and why it's important, okay? And then we looked at these, then during the listening, what you can do is you can send, you can send, sorry, <laughs> you can send out your um, questions and your, a few questions beforehand to students. And then when they come into the classes, you can put them into their Zoom breakout rooms where they can discuss the questions. Okay, so now I'm going to ask you to go into your, into some breakout rooms, which I'm going to just divide and put you into now. And... So your idea, your idea, Katie, is to prepare a task send it in, 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 uh, earlier to our students in, yeah. uh, in, uh, in advance, then just move to during listening, then post listening, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you can then put them into some, some chat rooms, into breakout rooms where, oh, where students can then answer these questions and what were the main points made in the video you watched which words and phrases did you learn and then you can give them some post learning activities okay so i'm going to put you into some breakout rooms can i put them into the breakout rooms ashraf or can you do that would you like me to do it yes i'd love you to do it <laughs> okay we have 35 so let's yeah, move them to mean, yeah we could put um five rooms yeah five rooms is fine and then i'll i'll go in and out as well okay everybody move <laughs> move, <laughs> move. <laughs> i love that <laughs> we will we will wreck them yes <laughs> move <laughs> run into it okay <laughs> yalla nabila yalla <laughs> yalla yalla <laughs> okay so basically in the in and then in the breakout rooms what we're going to do is i'm just going to take the questions and then post them in there uh -huh. So has everyone gone into breakout rooms, Ashraf? Sorry? Has everyone gone into breakout rooms? Yeah, yeah. Okay.
ask and then after that the boss listening and then they divided us to rooms to do that i don't know what the, what we are supposed to do now but we shall we shall no no, no. okay all to, right that's great that, that's, that's uh -huh. such that, that's a really good resume of everything that what so basically if you give your students some some uh -huh. ideas to talk about before they go into the groups so on the last slide so you can see on the slides i've shared with you there's some questions that you can you during listening and now I'd like you to think about how important it is to learn the lang the post listening questions and um, so I'm going to put them into the chat room have you got a very bad connection. I guess I summarized the video but the internet connection is so bad here so that's why I can't concentrate with you all. Summarize what you learned from the video. Summarize what you understand. So here, actually, actually learning two languages makes your mind complex, more healthy, and actively engaged. So this is the first idea about this. Hey, Nabila. Yes, Ashraf. Hi. You're asking for help. Uh, we're waiting for the thing. Okay. I'm waiting for any discussion. <laughs> I will look. None of you ha has watched the video that I have sent this morning. I did quickly, I didn't all. Ah. Give me my. <laughs> okay, let me see it. Uh, <laughs> I don't have the link right now. I've just sent it uh, on WhatsApp. Send it again on WhatsApp. Okay. Yeah. Quickly to Dahnash. Okay. Then? No, it's not working. I don't know why. Okay, just click on it. Got it? Anabila? Again. Hello, teachers. Hello, Mr. Ashraf. How are you? Yeah, hello. hello, Mr. Ashraf. Fine. Um, How are you too? I'm fine. Did you watch the video or none of you just did? Yes, I did. Yeah, we did. Yes, we watched it. Yeah, we did. So just go in open discussion, talk about it, okay? Because I'm about to close the rooms now. Yeah, yeah, uh. Talk about the different uh, languages that affect on um, the way of thinking. Ah, excellent. Okay. Yeah, it's a really good idea to do it. And um, I think you know the big the big point of doing it is that you know students have got to be able to be given the opportunity to talk about what they've listened to as well. So and that's uh, what I'm doing. Ashraf, can we yeah. go come out of this room? Would you like me to just close the whole rooms? I think uh, it's yeah, enough. Go back to the main room. Okay. Are we going to the main room automatically? Yeah. yeah. Okay, are we still here in the 
breaking out rooms. Okay, you oh. should be out oh, of the Lord. breaking out rooms now. You are not in the breakout room now. You are in the main room. <laughs> Everybody okay. is, I think. We have perfect All right. So, so the main the main questions really there that were to, to, to have a look at is what is the point of doing um, some pre-listening tasks before your students come to the classroom? And uh, I think some really good points were made by um, some of the teachers that I listened to. So um, uh, let's have a look. So Nabila, you've, you haven't got your mute button on, so I'm gonna pick on you straight away. Okay, here we um, are. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great, good. Okay, so Nabila, um, you know, yes. how do you feel that your students could benefit from having the tasks beforehand and the listening beforehand? The fact they are familiarized to the thing they they are going to have is a good idea. Hmm. Then they they have full space to listen and listen again and practice, and you know it makes the the task easier for them, as well as me, and this is the point. Absolutely, easier, faster, more space to practice. That's it. Yeah, absolutely. And they get more time in the in the class, and they have more information. They have much more information. They can look at them up. They can, uh, they can, they can discover things. They can prepare some questions for me as well. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. And I've noticed as well. Someone has written that they they like to, um, they think that it's good to watch the video without a translation. And I think that that's really important as well because we need to get students comfortable with listening to authentic language. And whilst that's a challenge, we can moderate the task and make the task simpler, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's have a look at the questions we were going to ask. I, I just put those questions there on the PowerPoint before. And... So... I had with the 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 with the the questions. How important is it to learn the language of the place where you live? Do you think you behave differently when you speak another language? And which languages are globally more most important now? And do you think this will change? And these types of questions, just three questions, can be quite good at getting some students to have some different ideas and to be able to think about different things okay and to be able to engage with the listening all right in fact according to the palestinian curriculum we always have three listening questions we oh, always you? have three good okay so, so yes this would fit quite well then with your with your way of doing it wouldn't it that's that would be a good way to do it we do the same thing Okay, can you think of any other benefits, anybody else? Can you think of any other benefits of students being able to listen before the class? Get used to the right intonation. Yeah. yeah no, no, uh, I, I think, I think, um, uh, when you speak to them in a native language to give them the ability to listen well, I think with this way, you can get their attention to you and to the title of the whole lesson in order to be focused. Okay, great. And also as well, another big advantage as well is, to, is, is technology. If we give the students access to things before the class, then if there are difficulties with internet, like I just had then, <laughs> because actually it drops in the UK as well because everyone's on the internet so so um so you know when when um you know there are challenges and everything then you have given students the opportunity to choose the best time for them to be able to listen to something you know maybe Maybe the electricity is cut in, in Gaza, you know, that happens very often. Yeah. 
and I don't need to tell you that really <laughs> okay so so you know there are lots of different challenges so it gives it gives the learner a little bit more autonomy okay so that's one way of doing it so all we're doing is giving the students the opportunity we give them some pre-listening tasks we give them some during listening tasks and then we use the time afterwards to be able to go into breakout rooms and have a discussion. Okay, right. So, um, is, is it prayer time now or? We still have uh, exactly. 10 minutes. Still, we have okay. 10 minutes. We still have okay. 10 minutes. Okay. okay. Okay, before the prayer? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now being is questioning that you know okay so let's maybe uh, i'm going to okay let me add something um Katie. yes one important thing about the brief tasks whether they were listening reading or writing i mean all brief tasks give students opportunities to get ready according to the uh, level or to they to their uh, you know pace they can just without without be being uh, under stress or under pressure by uh, comparing uh, themselves with others yeah absolutely so it really reduces the stress and yeah. the you know, it's very difficult for some students and it gives you some time to be able to as well manage your breakup rooms, which I'm afraid I didn't particularly manage particularly well, but it gives you time to manage those breakout rooms so you can get students who work together well or perhaps, you know, will do some work other than just chatting. You know, it gives you time to be able to develop those. Okay, great. All right, so going back, there are some possible issues and problems always with these, with these things. And we're thinking about how they can be managed as well. And one of the things that you can do is to be able to um, put it into Google Classrooms or into maybe using WhatsApp. Do you use WhatsApp in Gaza? Yes, we're using it widely. Good, great. You know, because there's no reason why these files can't be shared on WhatsApp and then they can do their listening with a little bit more ease. And, um, you know, WhatsApp works very well for, in some countries. Google Duo works very well in some countries. So mm. just different ways of thinking about the same thing. Okay. So, so now I guess this is a call for every teachers watching this. Just select a listening material, pass it to your students in advance, a day before the, 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 the time, and ask them to be prepared for the coming questions. Absolutely. Am I right? Absolutely. So yeah. During listening and post listening. Okay. And so what I've done for you is I've put in um, Google Classroom, and I'll send you a file later, of a very simple format to be able to, um, that you can see here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I've given you a very simple document, which I'll share with um, Ashraf and he can send out to you on Google Classroom, which you can use over and over again, which just follows that format and you can you can just follow that. Okay, okay well. so let's have a look at another um, way of doing it. So lesson format one, before the class students complete pre-listening activity on Google Classrooms. Before class students watch or listen to an audio or video link in Google Classrooms. During class, they use Zoom to discuss the listening tasks. And during class, they use Zoom, breakout rooms and Google Classroom to collaborate in small groups. If you want them to write up their questions, you could do this on paper, or you could set up a document for them to collaborate and all write together 
yeah, in Google Classroom. All right, so already you've got a nice task that you can give to students on a weekly basis. Okay, it could be their homework and then they could come back in with it and then you could discuss it. All right, so um, I will, am going to let you have your prayer time now before we go on to part two. All right, so we're gonna go, when we come back, we're going to have a look at a dictogloss and how that works, okay? All right, so I'm gonna have a quick break and let you all go and have some prep your prayers. Okay, everybody, just have a 10 minutes break. Okay. So it's now 6.35, we're going back 6.45. Uh, yeah. Okay, enjoy your coffee, uh, Kitty. <laughs> Thank you. There's no voice. Can you hear me now, Khalid? Can you hear me, Khalid, now? I was only I on can mute. hear you. 
I'm only I was okay. only on mute. I talk too much anyway. It's okay to put me on mute sometimes. <laughs> no, no, it seems that you put yourself on mute. I don't know. <laughs> no, no. It's, it's because it's I have okay. No, it's actually I haven't don't seem to have the um I'm, I'm not the host. So uh-huh. Yeah, so Maybe that's, that's why, why. I, I mm -hmm. yeah. I was put on to mute automatically. Lots of great ideas there. Okay, so, um, so yeah, it's it's really it's 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 just such an easy way to manage the online learning situation. I think is to do that is just to is to really. Um, Actually, at first when we, we start. When we start using like online teaching, it was like a bit difficult, but then when yeah. we get used to it, it is like a bit easier now. Mm. And we are familiarizing ourselves with like different apps, like different, uh, like Google Classroom, uh, yeah. Model, Edmodo. Um, actually, I took these and in, in courses in my master's degree. That's why like I'm a bit uh -huh. familiar with these things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I haven't really used Edmodo that much, but uh, yeah, it's great. You know, I've used a lot of, um, I used a lot of Microsoft Teams, to be honest with you, and I found that really quite useful. And I was noticing as well, you've got Google Meet is going to be put, you're yes. going to be allowed soon. They are working and developing to improve the breakout rooms and the videoing in Google Meet which is going to be able to be embedded in Google Classroom, which I think will be highly yeah. beneficial. Of you course, but the problem, uh, the problem is not with like, uh, mainly with the teachers, maybe because we have uh, internet and we have like these things. But mm. I think that it's, ma it's mainly with the students themselves because uh, some of the students, they don't have internet connections. Some of them, they maybe they don't have phones, their fathers or their mothers, they have the phone. And this is a bit of a problem, okay. but I think that the, now they are, uh, the parents, they are more aware of these things and, and a bit by bit they are starting like let their children using these apps because of like coronavirus and what is happening here in Gaza. And I think uh, we like uh, recently start using Edmodo with the students. Actually, I, I am teaching in a center English as a trainer not as a teacher in, at schools. Uh -huh. And and we start using it, and even after returning to centers, uh, we are going to use online teaching as one of our basics methods in teaching, which yeah, I think good. that it's really really good. Yeah, yeah, it is really good. And what uh, you were like mentioning before about like pre tasks, giving the students to do pre tasks and then come to the class, I think that they are like a major point in giving the students the confidence, being independent, autonomous learners, and actually they can prepare themselves. And what uh, Mr. Yeah. Ashraf said before about like uh, learning according to their own pace, because we yeah. have uh, like individual and differences. Their own, and their own IT abilities and, and resources, because you know, that way the students parents can also be engaged a lot more if they if the if the parents know what is going on then they're more likely to be able to help aren't they so good good point yes really good point. Oh. <laughs> really sorry for this <laughs> Don't worry, she, she, hit, she, she hit her head in the, in the door that's why oh. i'm really sorry for this <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> These things happen. Okay, so let's let's go on to um, the second part, and we're just going to talk through. I I don't seem to. Um, I I'm not quite sure if I can put you into chat room into breakout rooms um, because I don't seem to be able to do it. I don't know why. I think I might not have connected it. Oh, can I just, uh, it's Okay. okay, so I'm going to Just click, click, click on the three dots on the right of the bottom. Mm -hmm. Are you with me, Katie? Uh -huh. Hang on. Click, click on the three dots at the right at the bottom. Yeah, there should be uh, the breakout rooms. Yeah. Oh, okay. No. 
Did you no, find them? Not, no. Which makes me think that they're not being enabled. But it's okay. It's all right. It's okay, no. Yes. Yeah. She needs to be a host, not a co-host, in order to find them. Yeah. No, no, no. It's okay. It depends on the virgin she has. Yeah. Okay. No, it's definitely not there, which, anyway. which is what flummoxed me. But it's okay, because because we can still manage it. I'll just give you the questions beforehand this time. Okay. Let's just admit Carol. Carol is about to oh, join. Oh, Carol, you can join in. Session. Okay. So, let's have a look at part two. And like I said, so part one, we looked at the lesson format, which... which um, rests on having the um, pre-listening tasks and during listening and giving the students beforehand some work to do. And it's very much based on a sort of a flip learning approach. Part two, I was going to mention dictoglosses because Carol actually um, mentioned them before and I thought it would be a good thing to do. And I actually have used them a lot. Um, so I thought we could go through a dictogloss because I think it's a really good way to get students to collaborate. And one of the things that we said right at the beginning is how do we get students to collaborate and feel like they're in a classroom? So first of all, I thought it would be a good idea to go through what a dictogloss is. Can I just check to see if anybody really, if everybody knows what a dictogloss is? Yes, I know. You. Yeah, <laughs> great, good. You use them much, Doa? Yes, I use it with my students. Yeah, do they enjoy them? Of course. And I like they, they're creative in, in, in reconstructing their own, the same ideas with different like uh, methods. They, if each one of the, the students express the same idea with different words. Great, 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 good. Just, just to put you in sight. The, the teachers attending this uh, session are the elite of East Gaza Directorate. <laughs> so um, you just feel free to uh, talk about anything you, you know. I'm sure that they know it. Yeah, it sounds like they do. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah great. Good. So um, the lesson format um, on the, the second uh, lesson formats that I thought that would be a very useful thing to do is to use a dictogloss. So um, why use a dictogloss? Well, like we said, it's a very good way for recreating a text. So let's have a look at the procedure first of all. So I'm going to go um, to this procedure and you can have a look to see what we're going to do. So generally, we do a, pre, a short pre-listing task. Just discuss briefly a topic. Now I've chosen as the topic um, planets and Mars, and I've chosen this topic here, okay? And um, so I thought that a nice little pre-listening task to bring up to the students would be to just have a photograph, have a picture like this, and can you name the planets? Um, can somebody name the planets? Um, I'm going to ask Mutaz as I remember that name. Okay, so Mutaz, uh, was there a Mutaz? I'm sure there was, wasn't there? Yes, but he's just left. He told me that he has an emergence. An oh, emergency. okay, so he, yeah, all right. Okay, so I will ask someone who would like to do it. <laughs> okay, so let's have, um, uh, Anybody else? So we've got um, uh, Tahani. You there, Tahani? Oh well, it's okay. We can we we don't we it, it's it's okay anyway. So what we can do is we can nominate some students, but we could also think about together about. Um, just putting into the chat room as well. Can you name the planets? So it's a good way to start the yes. lesson. Uh, ah, Katie, I can do that. Hello. Hi. <laughs> you, hello, Doreen. Do you want to uh -huh. do, you, do you want to name the planets? Yes, yes, I can do, but uh, in order, yeah? 
So Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, uh, Jupiter, Saturn, uh, Uranus, uh, and Neptune. Brilliant, good. And the last one, pizzas? What, uh, Pluto? <laughs> Pluto, yeah. <laughs> so, so I quite like that little ride, you know. I guess. <laughs> pizzas, you'll always think of that now as pizzas, pizza planet. So my very excellent mother just sent us nine pizzas. Okay, so this is, um, can get the students to be able to understand, um, to talk about the planets, and that's what our focus is. And the reason I have focused it on this particular topic is because I think it probably sits quite well with their school curriculum. They probably have some th features like this where they're learning about science and it's something which lots of children are interested in the planets and the sky and stars and things so it's, it's a very good subject to take for children. All right so I've chosen this as my topic and, oh, and then it says what do you know about Mars is it like Earth? You know, so we just discuss what these are on Zoom and do it all together. And then the teacher can read or play audio of a short, short excerpt. Students just listen the first time. They don't write. They just want to listen to it and just get used to it. OK, and then you repeat the audio. Now, the very fact that we keep repeating the audio would mean that really it's quite a good way, time to have um, it already recorded. So I'm just going to go back to the previous slide to show you. Can you see there the QCR code? Yeah, the yeah. QR code, can you see that? Yes. Yeah, yes. and also there is also a link to an audio. All right, so I'm gonna just click that open link in new window. And tab. And I'm hoping that that, I'm just going to open it in my new tab. Okay, just go to the plus sign. Here we go. Okay, that's it. All right. So what I've got here is this um, is this website called Bokaru. And I don't know how many people are using this, but it's very, very, very useful because you can actually just record anything. You can um, record yourself. You could upload some audio. You could put a song on this audio. You can use it it's, and you could put the link very easy. It's very easy to use as well. So students could use this as well. It's not a very difficult app to use at all. So it's is just it, a voice it, recording. For free? It's free. Yeah. It's completely free, Ashraf. Okay, so, um, all right. So what I've done, for my um, audio is I decided for the dictogloss, it would be a good idea to record it. That way the students, if they have again an internet problem or they have a problem with connectivity or you want to give this to them as an ongoing task, they can then have this link in Google Classrooms and go back to it. All right, so this is the audio and we will play the audio. And the first time we would just ask the students to write down the key words of what they hear. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's have a little go at this activity. All right, and we're gonna do this together. All right, so um, just listen, first of all, and uh, you're not gonna stop it. And you're just going to write down the key words. Mars is a cold desert world. It is half the size of Earth. Mars is sometimes called the red planet. It's red because of rusty iron in the ground. Like Earth, Mars has seasons, polar ice caps, volcanoes, canyons, and weather. It has a very thin atmosphere made of carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and 
The oh. signs of ancient floods on Mars are now water mostly exists in icy dirt and thin clouds. On some Martian hillsides, there is evidence of liquid salty water in the ground. Scientists want to know if Mars may have had living things in the past. They also want to know if Mars could support life now or in the future. Okay, so this, this type of activity, we would have a look then and we would ask the students to go into their breakout rooms and to be able to share what they have written down. Now you could play that audio two or three times. There's also a QR code and that goes straight to the audio. So your students, if they've got a phone, they all they need to do is to QR, take a photograph of it, and then they have the audio. So this is a really useful app to use. Yes, I guess. I think they can use it for dictation. Yep. Yeah. They can use it for all good. sorts of things. But this is a very good idea for um, developing their listening. So going into listening skills. Oop. So I don't know where that those that writings come from, but anyway. <laughs> anyway, so um, all right, so teacher the reads or plays the audio short excerpt. Students just listen the first time they don't write. And then we repeat the audio, and the students this time make notes of the key words. All right, so you've given them the vocaroo, then you can give the groups different tasks or even each member of the group. You could say, for example, breakout room A, just write down the verbs. Breakout room B, write down, for example, some feature, maybe it's numbers, maybe it's geographical features, like for example, in that piece of text. And then C, you could give nouns or you could give a different job to do. Another thing is to only give them half the text. You don't need to give all of the text to them. So if you've got a large group of lots of different abilities and sort of different mixed ability classes, then what you can do is ask some students to do um, the more, you know, to do one paragraph, some students to do two paragraphs and one group to do three paragraphs. So now you're thinking about your breakout rooms being differentiated by their abilities and by the task. All right. So again, from a teacher's perspective, this is a really good task that can give you quite a lot of learning and lesson output. Yeah, okay. and you know, Katie, I have an idea for to use this um, uh, website to use it inside Google Classrooms. You can just record uh, an audio. For instance, if you have a, um, a, a listen about animals, just record um, an audio uh, that includes um, a text or a paragraph inside it, lots of uh, animal names and ask the children inside your Google Classrooms to listen and write the, the animals they hear. Absolutely. And what you can do as well with Vokaroo, so with the Dictogloss, our Dictogloss is really about the, the, the students having the opportunity to collaborate and work it out and reconstruct the text together. So as you said, Doa, you know, it's their ability to, to be able to go back and work it out themselves. All right, so yes. if you've got an opportunity in the Google Classroom, what you can do, as Mr. Ashraf says, you can upload, um, you can upload the audio into your Google Documents, into your Google Classroom, and then you can get them to work collaboratively on a text because as you know google classrooms and google documents more than one person can write at the same time okay so 
with a, this dictogloss, what you can do is you can reconstruct the text. They go to their breakout rooms, they can discuss it, they can write it down on paper, and they can take a photograph of that and send it back to the teacher, or as well, they can go into Google Classrooms and work on the text together and develop the text, okay? The teacher's role here is really to go between the rooms and check. Okay, so let's have a look here. So here is the text, the final text, and this is what was said. So then you can give to the students then this text and they can, they can work on particular items. So they maybe we'll just give them the first line because actually it's quite a long text this. All right, so maybe we'll just give them the first line there. And that's the bit that they could construct in the text. And then if we go back up, these are the different ideas. So once they have done the text, then your students can come back into the classroom and work on some different micro skills that help listening. Okay, and the idea with helping the listening is that if students understand the features more of, of, of how we speak in authentic speech, then that will help them with their listening. And one of the things that they can do is, for example, identify word stress. Now, most of the word stress is going to fall, as you know, on the keywords. And they could do this, they could annotate. So here, what we could do now is just annotate the main keywords. So you've reconstructed the text with the students. And now we want to have a look at how we can annotate it and um, identify some of the core themes and the key themes of the text. All right, so uh, Doa, as you're there, um, could you please, uh, and everybody else who, who wants to, um, first of all, we're just going to identify words which would be stressed, okay? So pick up your, your tools. I think we did this with, um, with uh, Carol before. So you can pick up a tool and you could just annotate the text where the stress is going to be. And as a teacher, what you could do is just read it out again or play the audio again so the students can hear where the stress is going to be. Okay. It's quite tricky to, to do the lines, isn't it? I have noticed that. <laughs> Uh, oh, I'm finding it quite difficult as well, actually. Okay, so we're, we're picking up the, the nouns. Ah, okay. I think Carol's correct. Maybe a stamp is easier. Is a stamp easier, Carol? Lots easier, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a stamp is easier. <laughs> okay, so perhaps that's a really good idea. I'm going, I'm going to clear that. I'm going to clear all the drawings and let's go through again. So, um, Doreen, could you want to do the last sentence beginning with scientists? And um, who else have we got there? So, uh, Doreen, if you, if you, Get the stamp, and if you put the them over the keywords, and what words are the keywords, Doreen? What are the keywords that we're trying to teach the students? Where should the stress be? You're all right anyway. It's on the nouns, okay? So, so it's on the content words and the verbs, and that's where we can hear the stress. All right, so we've got that, and we are going to, I'm going to get someone else. So, Nabila, okay, could you pick another stamp, maybe the heart stamp? And now, could you 
could you just put in the, the where there is weak stress, okay, where there is no stress at all on the words in the in the first sentence, the sentence beginning with Mars. Can you pick up the weak stress? Great, good. Okay, what you can do is, is a stamp if you like, and it might be easier. So, um, so just yeah. I great. don't have a music, my mobile phone. Oh, oh don't you? Ah. Don't you have a stamp on the mobile Excuse phone? Me. I can't say them. I cannot stamp them. You just have to. Okay, so we have to think about that, don't we? That's a challenge that we need to think about. But what you could do, maybe Nabila, is save it onto Google Documents as well where it is easier to annotate the text um, online, on mobiles, I think. Is that correct? I will try. I can't give you an immediate uh, answer. I <laughs> have time to try it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I can't idea... unmute people otherwise. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so what we can do is we can, we can, um, a dictogloss is a really good online activity for a variety of students. Um, should we have a quick chat and discussion about how else you, what other features of language you think that we could, um, we could pick up on as a post listening activity. So we've listened to the text, we've reconstructed the text, and now we're going to focus on features of the text. And we've talked about word stress, so strong forms and weak forms. Can, can you think of other things that we could pick up on that would help people's listening? Katie, can I ask a question, please? Yeah. Okay, you were, we were discuss, discussing about stress and, and how can we pick them. Do you mean that we should do this with our students? Yeah. To know where is the stress with whether it's weak or strong. I don't think that we should like do this in, in post listening activity. Okay. Mainly because stress is difficult for students to recognize. That's why I think that they should listen and imitate only. They should they shouldn't know that there is a weak and strong stress, unless like uh, because some teachers they don't know even how to like to pick. Uh, with all respect, of course, uh, where is the stress or where is strong and weak. I think students cannot recognize this thing, especially when they are young. So hey, I think that not, we stress not, is not a task. Yeah, Mr. Dua, it's not part of our curriculum to teach students uh -huh. the stresses. The only, you know, we have just learned about stresses in the universities. So okay, right. So just, so just so, so 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 from it's from well, the reason that it's quite a good um, task, but after after. Um, after a listening task and how it helps of listening is that we're just trying to get them to pick up the content words. And so uh -huh. really the content words carry the meaning, but it's really the content words that carry the stress. So whilst, um, whilst we don't really necessarily need to, if you, don't, if, you, if you don't feel that all of your classes need to understand the terminology of word stress and strong stress, etc. Um, I think it's still quite useful um, for them to be able to understand that the words that they that carry the meaning are going to be the stronger stressed words. So, does that help with understanding that and how you could put it into the class? Do you know what I suggest? Of I course, suggest. I understand. Excuse me, Dora. You can just, you know, if you're teaching, uh, oh, okay, I think you, you're teaching 10th grade, you said? Are you teaching? I taught uh, ninth, ninth grade and 11th graders. Okay, good. If, you, if you're teaching, for instance, uh, past perfect or past symbol, you can just give them a text, ask them to um, uh, stamp or uh, just pick up the, um, the, the verbs, the past verbs, the, um, you know, such things. So it's up to you what to give your students. I think, 
I think yeah, it you mean the text of use this text to teach the present so simple to express facts. Right, yeah. good. You, so you, so that's how you would use Most it. Is really cool. is there really fraud? Is, is, yes, too simple and too easy. The first thing, if we want to use it for structure, okay, the present simple to express facts is the best thing you can find here. Okay, all right. I think. So, so, so the. So the dictogloss uh, as well tasks, a lot of the, um, the, the post listening tasks associated with dictoglosses are about sort of just finding different features of language that enable and help with listening, but also as well, it's really great to embed some grammar like Nabila says about how to use the present tense. So there's lots of different ways you can use the text. So you can do some listening and then lead into some, some reading and to some grammar and to understand. Fill in the gaps, yes. Okay. Guys, as I told you before, we can't cover everything in this course. We can't cover the listening, how to teach listening in uh, an hour and a half. It's, it's, it, Miss Katie is just giving you hints and you should make use of them and uh, convert them to be suitable for you as a teachers. You're yes, the leaders. Yes. Yeah, you're the leaders. Absolutely. And there's many different ways of doing things. So another another useful activity that could be done here is to look at um, is to look at uh, grammar words. So grammatical words like is and has and also as well connectives like and which is you know and but and all of these words whilst whilst um we're not talking about stress but it really helps with listening to english people and because so many people say we eat our words but actually it's because so many words aren't stressed <laughs> So developing that awareness. So even if it's not taught, I think developing is about developing that awareness. And we don't eat our words. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're not, you're not, by the way. <laughs> we do a little bit, don't we? Okay. So um, what, what other text do you think you, you could use? So I was going to finish by sort of asking you what type of audios would you be able to use for a dictogloss? Okay, I chose this particular, um, I chose this particular uh, uh, subject of space and planets because I thought it would be engaging for students. What do you think would be engaging and would engage your students? Okay, so let's just have a little end of chat and we'll go to the chat room at the side and see what other areas people, what topic areas people think would be useful to find a text on. I thought maybe poetry would be very good for um, Arabic speakers. I know that a lot of Arabic speakers have a rich history of poetry. Is that something that people would like to try? Poems? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> no? <laughs> no? No, no, no. I don't think they, they would like to talk about their free times, more, maybe more, or holidays. Okay, so they talk about their free time and holidays. So what sort of audio would go maybe. well with that? For me. Okay. We have lots of areas regarding these, like these topics. Okay, yeah. Yes, Hop is, is, is writing Hop is, which is something that we like to talk about as well. Yeah, absolutely. Stories. International stories, well known. International yes. stories, great, great. Yes, because they have the background, so they can use the vocabulary, they can imagine as well. They can imagine, yeah, exactly. Yes. And it's they can predict as well the meaning of the words because they know the story. So they can think about the, the coming and, you know, they can use their imagination to get the meaning of the words from the context. They have an idea. It will be so interesting. I tried this with my children. 
Okay, Reem, you've said arts and crafts. That's a really good idea for a dictogloss because arts and crafts and favourite sports, etc., they're really good for um, for embedding other types of grammar, which would be listening to instructions. You know, so for so you said about um, arts and crafts. What types of arts and crafts, Reem? Embroidery, maybe? Yeah, great. Okay. okay. So how do you think, where do you think you could find an audio of that? Or do you think you could just make an audio using Vokaroo? Open question for everybody. We can do both. YouTube. Yeah. Right. Even on iCloud, there are some, some, some recording. Right. You know, Good. just for children. Yes, everywhere. We can find these authentic, you know, resources are everywhere. They're absolutely everywhere, aren't they? And um, the great thing about Vokaroo is that sometimes it's a real challenge to find, although we want to have authentic texts, sometimes I think it's very challenging for lower level students. And so sometimes I think to be able to have the ability to make your own text and maybe mm -hmm. read a poem or to write some simple instructions or make something that is really culturally um, culturally appropriate for Gaza and for mm -hmm. the children of Gaza who've got very different life experiences. And, you know, maybe recording our own ones sometimes can really help those students. Okay, we've got so many ideas here, okay? So favorite things, all of the nice A2, A1, A2, I'm talking about the CEFR, you know, very similar, those types of, those types of um, topics that we have at that level. All right, I have, oh my um, God. I have given you here as well, some micro skills. So it's, it's really good with a dictogloss, it's like I said, you reconstruct the text collaboratively, and then students can then work on different micro skills that help listening. Perhaps that is identifying word stress. Perhaps that is identifying contractions like he's and understanding how to spell them. A piece of dialogue would be very good. Perhaps identifying some chunks of language, some collocations and some common language. Mm -hmm. And perhaps by identifying this, it helps students listening. It helps them become more aware, but it also helps them with um, their grammar points and many other skills. Okay, because we, do, we know that people can improve their listening through predicting and inferring meaning. All right, so let's go back to the beginning now. Right at the very beginning. Okay, so this is what we set out to do. We've reviewed two lesson formats for teaching listening online. One of them was developing a dictogloss for online learning. And one of them is to uh, use the flip learning method of giving the students the activity before the class and then working on it in class. And the idea is to develop learners autonomy, but also as well, um, be, being very aware of the resources and giving students the ability to go back to their learning on Google Classrooms. All right. so. And we had the listing logs. So I'm just going to share with you just finally. Um, this is the uh, general listening task sheet. So this is a sheet. I sent it actually out as an email. And um, I think it's a very useful thing to do. So you send this out with um, uh, a link to the audio that you would like them to listen to. So pre-listing skills, they put the title in there, ask them 
What do you know already about the topic? What words and phrases do you expect to hear? And then while they're listening, you can add and change those questions. And then you can think about your questions for a post listening discussion in Zoom after the class. And then again here, we saw the listening log as well. So this is something you can set up for your class, but also you could set up as a professional area for yourselves to be able to share things which are very good. Because while there's lots on the on the um, internet, a lot of it is very difficult. It's, it's difficult to look through it all yourself sometimes. So it's very good to have some recommendations. Okay. Right. So that is a whistle stop tour through some ideas to help with teaching listening online. And Can you well, please we have got the Vokaroo. Katie. Okay. Yeah. There is a question by Huda Safadi. She asks, I'd like to ask you which is better to improve listening skills to listen to audio or watch a story about the topic which is narrated to us to students. Um well, they're, they're quite different, you know. Um, sometimes giving students uh, a video is good because it helps them be able to get a bit more context. And in reality, a lot of us like to have context when we listen. So it's it, you you can learn a lot from um, from just what's around and everything. You see, this is a virus I've got on my computer at the moment. Okay. And um, so you can um, you can learn a lot. So I think I think you know both are good. I I think that having only audio sometimes is invaluable, especially in a dictogloss situation, because it it stops the students from getting distracted by other information and it focuses them on the task. So both have their uses. You know, I would say never use uh, just one way. Try mm. to use variety of, yeah. uh, you know, use videos, use audio, just record your voice to them. You can ne never use the same material to, when, when, when uh, dealing with students. Okay, have we got any more questions? Nabila. Uh, yes. Is that a question? No, thank you, I'm fine. <laughs> okay, teachers, any questions I'm enjoying. before we finish this? Anybody want to ask a question? Okay. So, I mean, one of the one of the key things I think that um I I mentioned right at the beginning is that it's so important to have the students and I know you, you as teachers you must be missing having them in classroom because you know it's a very different connection and it's a very different way of um, being with people and stuff so I think it's really important to try to get them to collaborate and to have that opportunity to collaborate in class and um, uh, that's why I chose those two particular ways of being able to get students to collaborate, because I think, you know, it's really important that we try to give them some sort of um, classroom experience. We have a suggestion okay. from Isra Amghari. She uh, suggests, uh, she says, always try to let your students listen with lyrics. It helps a lot. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Music with lyrics is fantastic, isn't yeah. it? Yes. Okay. And uh, does anyone does anyone use um, any short stories? Do you have any readers normally in your classrooms? I'm not sure. Books. Any... Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. They say yes. We have short stories in our classes. But mostly songs. 
Mostly yes, songs. songs, lovely. Yes, with lyrics and uh, and choral and yes. I've been to one Actually, of the music classes and I was really moved watching her, <laughs> her girls just singing all together. Yeah, and their pronunciation yeah. Was, uh, was was perfect. Really, yes. yeah. that's right. And that's why I think poetry lends itself a lot to the Arabic culture because I believe you you have some very you have a rich culture of 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 singing and of doing things together. You know, you're very collaborative as a culture. And so I feel, you know, that that uh, poetry for me worked very well when I was uh, when I when I have taught people with Arabic from Arabic and Middle Eastern countries. So I was wondering if poetry is is something that maybe could be used in um, in a dictogloss. It would work, work very well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Got lots of ideas here. Yeah. Um, I urge you to take some of your ideas down and put them in um your in, in somewhere so you've got record of your chat room there. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much, everybody. Yeah, yes, thank you. Yeah, the Okay. Just last last uh, idea. Mr. Yahya Daban talks about uh, King Lear. The poem of King Lear. Could you please just? It's a novel, no? Yeah, Sorry? yeah. It's a novel, yeah. King Lear. It's a novel. Yeah, Mr. Lear here. Could you please just unmute yourself? King Lear. Okay. Um, I'd like to say that by uh, learning students, for teaching students uh, songs. They can learn from the pronunciation, the sound, the... Yes, indeed. Okay? Mm. Yeah, and King Lear is a play by Shakespeare. Yeah. 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 It is a play by Shakespeare. <laughs> Quite right, too. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, songs, I mean, which songs... I mean, songs can be quite difficult. Some of the pop songs are very difficult for students these days. But again, I think, you know, that they're, they're great. They really like them. And I think a lot of teenagers, they can, they can actually, they, yeah, they can they choose can them, them as well. Them. Yes. They can choose them. When they are provided by students, it's much easier. And they yeah. enjoy learning. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. That it. would be something enjoyable for the students. Look, I yeah. hate those guys who says, no, I'm not going to give my students uh, some lyrics or some songs because they are um, you know younger and this strategy could no. be just with the, with the, um, uh, young kids no never has higher a ability and capacity students yeah 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 special song for young Yannick. you can download them from bbc yeah yeah yeah, yeah absolutely oh, what's yeah. your name everywhere. what's your name sir i can't i can't read your name obviously but um <laughs> that's a great <laughs> suggestion and um, my, my Arabic. Yahya, Yahya. Sorry? Yahya Baban. Yahya. Yahya. I know that name. I can say that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Shukran, Yahya. That's a great suggestion. And um, actually, you're right. But you know, those those methodologies, those lesson formats, so the so the lesson format one and the lesson format two, you they lend themselves to anything. So you could you could actually use that format and um, for for listening to a song, listening to music, you can use that format. So you could give them the song to work on, to listen to beforehand, and then um, identify parts of that that you'd like them learn, to work on. Okay, they, they learn uh, stress, uh, pronounce, the correct pronunciation without saying this is stress and this is, uh, okay? They yeah. uh, learn it you know, without uh, mentioning the names or the terminology. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, yes, they do. Um, the, 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 yes, they do, they do. Um, it, it, it can help as they get older to learn some of that terminology so that they can then focus on it and, and just know what it is. But no, I quite agree with you. When they're very young, yeah, can get a bit confused. They, they without without uh, mentioning that. Yeah, absolutely, without mentioning that. And By also, imitating. Mm, yeah, 
and and obviously imitating and repetition and by repeating it yeah through drilling okay well these are just some different ideas and different approaches to listening so so i think you know there's there's lots to be said from different lots of different methodologies and ways to teach listening and you're quite right can i say something can i say something please ezra why are we talking about king lear since we have young learners what about Disneyland movies? What about Disney movies for kids? Anime, animation movies for kids? They can learn more from King Lear, right? Okay, well, it depends. It depends those who teaches 12th grade. They have King Lear play, so- Okay, I'm teaching young learners, so why, why am I have to, to let them watch King Lear or read the novel King Lear? Since well, they can, can watch I say something else. You don't have to make them see or read your King Lear. Level. There are other things. It was just an idea, I think, you know, yeah. so, I mean- It's a proposition, it's not an obligation. It's according to the level. No. Yeah. Yeah, according to the level, absolutely. Yeah, I do agree with you, Nabila, I know. I'm just telling yeah. my opinion about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Most I totally would. agree because, uh, you know, King Lear is something developed for, for the younger learner, you know? So I would rather go for another another novel or short story. It's up to you. It depends on your yes. students' age. It depends on your students. It's according to yeah. Yeah. the capacities. Yeah. Exactly. Just choose whatever you okay. think it suits your students. There are, there's plenty of different websites and if you just search on YouTube short stories in English for English learners, you will find a wealth of different Ooh. things, yes. so many different things and, you know, some really exciting different things, including shortened Shakespeare plays, including... Yes. Including Ernest Hemingway. Yes, <laughs> so there's so much there that that's why I think the listening log as as a professional area for you guys would really help because it it, it just cuts your time as teachers looking for the right things and the right level and the right stories. Okay. Thank you so much for such an active session. Sorry I didn't manage to use the breakout rooms particularly effectively, but I hope that you have um, been able to really see that there's just very simple ideas. And even though I'm in the UK, I'm using just very simple ideas too. So, you know, it seems like we're all on the same page. Okay, thank you, Katie, for devoting an hour and a half of your time to help our teachers get some new ideas when teaching live listening or uh, online listening. Uh, thanks a bunch for being with us. And thanks to Carol for paying for the uh, Bro Zoom version. Thank you, Carol. Yeah, thanks, and, Carol. Uh, I think we, we have enjoyed being <laughs> with you. Anybody want to say anything? Uh, yes, I'd like to. Yes, I do. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'd like to thank you, Katie, because uh, you opened my mind uh, that uh, listening, I uh, shouldn't work uh, with it as uh, an, uh, a skill for itself. Listen just for listen. Uh, you uh, make me notice that I can use the listening uh, for teaching grammar and uh, teaching uh, writing as well. So uh, many thanks to you. Great, I'm really glad. Thank you, Doreen. No, that's great. You know, and I think, you know, listening isn't, it, it just isn't just a one way activity. Something yeah. happens to us when we listen to yeah. things. It's a process. So we've got to think about it as a process as well. Um, I'm going to share materials with Ashraf and um, I'm going to send you those formats so that you can use them straight away in your classes. And it's been delightful to talk to you today and I've really enjoyed it. So thank you very much for your attention and all of your rich comments. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Mr. Anwar, I'm, I, I not, I've noticed that you want to say something. Uh, no, no, just I want to thank um, uh, Kitty uh, for uh, this uh, lesson. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Somebody. Stasi, I want to tell you about the graphic. 
No, when thank you. No, you're welcome. You're welcome. Atika oh, Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we should teach you some Arabic as a reward for you. Ah, yalla, yalla. Okay, you know. yalla. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, yeah, You deserve you. to be taught Arabic. I know, I should learn it. Uh, thank um, you, everybody, for joining us. I'm going to end the session now. Hope you enjoyed it.